In this video, we'll be discussing about inclined planes and wedges. Now, inclined planes sound like a very fancy word. Let's try to understand what it is. It's actually very simple. Let's say there's a staircase here and there's a big box that you need to carry up. You need to take it all the way there. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a difficult task if this box is pretty heavy. So uh, what would you want to do? Now, if in case you had the option of not taking the staircase, but taking a ramp like this, this may seem a little easier because you can push the box up easily as compared to the staircase, right? This sliding sloping ramp is basically an inclined plane. Okay, inclined plane is just a fancy word for this simple ramp. Now, it would be even more easier if you had a few wheels attached to this box or if you could place it on a trolley and you had a ramp, now things are very easy. Relatively easy as compared to staircase, right? And you can get it up there. And getting this box down would definitely be easier than the case of the staircase, right? So basically a ramp is an inclined plane. Let me give you a few examples where you've seen it or where you would see it. Let's take an example first. Let's look at this picture. This guy is on a wheelchair and he's stuck because there's just stairs in front of him. If there was a ramp there, life would have been much easier for him, right? I'm sure you've seen this. That's a slide in your playground. And that is also just an inclined plane. Okay. And uh, inclined planes can be used to load cargo. For example, look at this truck. There's a ramp there and you can slide things up easily. Let's move ahead to now discussing screws. This is a nail, right? It's smooth and it doesn't have any grooves. On the other hand, if you look at a screw, this is a screw, you can see that there are small grooves on the screw. And these grooves are called thread. And this is what makes it different from the nail, right? Let's, let's put this on pause and discuss another interesting case like this. Let's put this on pause and to understand why a screw is different and in many ways better than a nail, let's get into a simple example like this. Let's say there's a mountain here and there's a flag on top and you need to reach that flag, right? Now, if you're a mountain climber, you would say, this is the path that I'm going to take straight up to the flag, right? But what if I told you that you need to take your car up the mountain because the mountain's pretty big uh, and it's going to take a long time by, you know, foot if you climb the mountain you need to take your car and the angle there is 70 degrees do you think you'd be able to take a car up that slope i'm pretty sure you can't right in such a scenario what would you do let's say you get innovative and you start building a road a road that goes like this a road that essentially spirals around the mountain to reach the top right Wait, now you may wonder wait a minute, why would we want to spiral around the mountain and take such a long time and such a long path to get to the top? Remember, you want to take your car up there, right? And if you want to take your car up the road and the angle is only 15 degrees, now this is a slope that's climbable by a car, whereas the 70 degree slope was just not climbable by the car, right? Now it makes sense why you want to take the spiral path up when you're driving your car. Most mountain roads are winding up the mountain because then it's very easy for cars to climb up. Okay, now get back to the screw and the nail. The screw here is similar to that winding mountain road that goes up slowly, right? Whereas the nail is similar to the straight mountain road. Okay, now uh, that is why if you see that it's easier for you to drill a screw into wood rather than a nail. Right? And the screw doesn't easily get loose and it provides much better grip as well. Okay? So those are the differences. Let's let's do a simple experiment to see how these screws are actually related to inclined planes. So a screw is actually an inclined plane wrapped around a nail. Let's let's see how this works. So here if you look at this video, you'd see that this is an inclined plane, right? And let's assume the pen is a nail, okay? And let's let's start the video. We're going to take the paper sheet, which is shaped in the shape of an inclined plane, and wrap it around slowly. And you'd see that this looks exactly like 
a screw. The thread looks exactly like a screw now. Right? So that basically is how a screw and a nail are actually related to each other. Let's now go ahead to the next topic, and that is a wedge. Wedges are basically a pair of inclined planes which are joined together. Okay, and let's see how that works. So if we have two inclined planes like this, right? These are both inclined planes. These are both ramps, right? And what if I join both of these ramps? I would get to something like this, right? And this is what we call as a wedge. Now, wedges are very useful in our daily life and you see them every day, okay? We'll get to the examples in a bit. Let's see how this is actually useful. Let's say you have a piece of wood and you want to break this piece of wood into two pieces. The simplest way to do it would be to get a wedge and to strike it with a wedge. So here is our wedge and here is the force that we're applying on the wedge. And this is the direction in which the wood would move. Okay, so the wood gets split into two pieces. Let's go to a few examples. Um, we have the first example is an axe. This is the classic example right, where you can use a wedge to break wood into two pieces. The other example you see in your house every day is a knife. Yes, that's a wedge. There are other examples like needles. These are also wedges of sorts. That's it for this video.